in the Q section, uh, in the original Monster Manual, you only had the Lonesome Quasit. And in the modern one, the Quasit's been moved to demons. It used to be able to shape change into a wolf as well as some other small vermin. Uh, but in modernly, no transformation. And uh, so, yeah, it, and it was mostly a separate entry as a familiar to a wizard. Moving on into the R's. Oh, a modern monster menu only has a Quagoth in the queues. Uh, you have the f infamous Rakshasa, and um, still a lot of spell casting ability here, which I absolutely love. Uh, in the original one, these guys were super, super, super. They're, they're still very powerful, but uh, they, hold on, let's just take a look. Yeah, they have ESP, and they're not affected by spells under the eighth level, which for the levels for which you're encountering them, basically give them uh, magical immunity. And they cannot be harmed by non-magical weapons below plus three, and even those do half damage. Uh, but a single hit by a blessed crossbow bolt, and they are absolutely toast. Now, a Rakshasa, well, wait, hold on a second, or is it an Oni? So White Plume Mountain, yeah, there's a ton of spoilers in this, by the way. White Plume Mountain features one of these two, I, th I actually think it's an Oni that's in White Plume Mountain. Yeah, so like this guy, yeah, is an Ogre Mage. So he's one of the villains in White Plume Mountain. Guy, I really want to run this module now. All right, so uh, moving on, again, more giant creatures. Rays, I don't, like, why do you need stats for a stingray? Come on, stick with the magic stuff. Remoras, another D&D &D, uh, original. Absolutely outstanding. Uh, and, um, of course, in the modern... Yeah, I'm kind of doing a compare-contrast here. Right? Well, I guess it is History of the Monster Manual, so we have to look at these different things. And you notice that uh, the rock is gone, which is from the uh, Seven Voyages of Sinbad. So again, uh, Gary Gygax was probably just had a big giant stack of, uh, of books as reference. And he was just, um, you know, making stuff up. And I think, I think it's really cool. Like a lot of great original things came out of this. And of course, um, companies like uh, Kobold Press, I think that's what this is. Yeah, Kobold Press, Tome of Beast. Yeah, I gotta make a little plug here. These are a must, at, this, at the time of this filming, they have three of these books out. They're absolutely massive, and it's all original color art throughout. And let me tell you, it is not cheap to get all this art. Uh, they're probably paying, um, if, if it costs $100 per picture, that would seem like not very, uh, very much to me. Uh, usually for color illustration, I think it's more like 500, maybe even more. So to get all of these illustrations is really, really absolutely amazing. And uh, of course there's a lot of originality here, but unfortunately the attention of the fan base of all the people that are doing fantasy role-playing is so diffused that you can't get iconic stuff anymore. Like, nothing in this book is going to become an iconic monster that everybody knows about. Why? Because there's a zillion books that you can buy now. And they're all such high quality. We're spoiled for choice. And uh, with the advent of AI art, I think you're going to have a lot of people that were kept out of the industry because of barriers to entry, i.e. they couldn't afford to get all of this amazing original art will be able to actually do something and it'll and it'll look really cool. Uh, so anyway, so this exists and I highly recommend them and I think, uh, I think there's a lot of cool stuff in there. Absolutely outstanding. Makes me happy inside my heart. All right, so uh, Rock, Giant Rhino, those are all gone, or they've been relegated. Uh, Revenant, Revenant, which appears in the modern Monster Manual, actually uh, made its first appearance, I do believe, in the Fiend Folio. It might actually be in an adventure. Um, and uh, I wonder if it'll be under R, literally. Yep, it is. So here's the, uh, the original art for Revenant. Look at that. 
Isn't that crazy? He's like chopping his hand off. This artist, I don't know his name offhand, he did a lot of stuff for the Fiend Folio. He's absolutely insane. Oh, and there's two pictures for Revenant. I mean, look at that. Isn't that incredible? I mean, just, and there's just so much great art in this. And the Fiend Folio is highly underrated. I totally recommend that you get this. And it's just, it's ridiculous. Uh, okay, you've got uh, Roper. And, uh, uh, yeah, it's, uh, that's a really cool creature too. Wait, we forgot Remoraz. So Remoraz, by the way, I have a miniature that I painted up of a Remoraz. Two actually, and they both turned out really good. Remoraz makes an appearance in uh, uh, the Glacial Rift of the Frost Giant Jarl. And for some reason, I can't seem to find it. Hold on, I'm still working on it. Yeah, there you go. Here's the three in one. Yeah, I've got to go back a little bit. Uh, yeah, there's a picture of a Remoraz that is really, really, really super cool. And it has a little bit of an Easter egg. So look at that. Isn't that amazing? Now look, there's two feet where it's swallowed somebody. Yeah, th this art is insanely cool. I mean, just so good. So anyway, uh, Rust Monster is an absolute classic. And look at this. In this one, it makes it look like it's rusting the boundaries of the thing, a little breaking of the fourth wall. Rot Grub does not appear. It might be in the DM guide as like a dungeon hazard, which I think is really how to treat these things. Uh, and then we're on to the S's. Yeah, we have plenty of time for that. So we've got Sahuagin. I don't know if that's how you say it, but they have a whole page as like these evil uh, underwater creatures. A salamander, which is a... Um, which is an, like an elemental fire creature. Uh, those up here in the demon web pits, uh, giant, um, a giant scorpion. Giant scorpions actually, even though they're just a mundane creature, they actually really do strike me as fantastical. Uh, Satyr, nothing much to say about that. Um, skunk giant, slither, okay, slithering tracker. This was once uh, a monster that existed. Uh, but it's kind of just uh, fallen into disuse. Or maybe it appears in one of the expansion things. I don't know. I still haven't been able to find them. Maybe you guys can tell me in the liner notes. Uh, but uh, it's a, a two and a half foot long creature that uh, just has paralyzation. doesn't have any other attacks. So it's kind of like something that you would want to do in like... Uh, a, like in combination with some other creature. Uh, let's check the modern monster manual. Let's see how we're doing in the S's. Yeah, Salamander, Satyrs in there, Scarecrows, something new, a Shadow. Uh, I think a Shadow does appear in the old monster manual. Did I just skip it? Oh yeah, I did. I skipped like a, yeah, I skipped like a whole giant page. Jeez. Uh, sea Hag, as I said before, uh, Hags, whoops. Hags have been uh, combined into one thing. Uh, seahorse, sea lion, you don't really see anymore. Uh, shambling mounds have appeared in like a zillion uh, different things. And, um, guy, what else? Shark, Shedu. Shedu? Uh, Shedu? I don't even know if that's how you say it. I don't know if it appears in the original, it, uh, or in the modern one. Yeah, uh, which is really too bad. It's definitely a mythological creature. I think it comes from Babylonian mythos. And uh, they have psionic abilities. And uh, these guys do make an appearance in uh, S3, I think it is. Okay, I don't know where that is. Oh, there it is. Okay, so this one. And uh, in the lowest levels, there's a pair of them. Tons of spoilers in this, by the way. Uh, Shrieker, I think a Shrieker uh, does not appear. It might be under Fungus? Something like that. Hmm. Well, anyway, this is a, this is, the Shrieker was a really cool monster. You could just spread it wherever, and it basically, if someone comes near it, it sets off an alarm, and it makes them very dangerous. And because... And even in, if you were making an adventure, and let's say you were an unfortunate DM where their players are like, hey, you got to go by strict challenge rating because we don't want you to make it too powerful, i.e. unfair, what they perceive as unfair. One way around that 
And that is fair is to have multiple encounters sort of become alerted at the same time. And that's something you don't want as an adventure party. You want to chew it off one bite at a time and not have everybody rushing in. And that's where a shrieker can be a really cool monster, a really cool challenge that they basically have maybe one round to just hack this thing to pieces. Uh, <coughs> Shield Guardian is a creature of the Fiend Folio that has been uh, imported and uh, it's really a cool it's really a cool creature and I'm about to be very embarrassed because it does not appear in here. I wonder if it's in the Monster Manual too. I remember seeing this for the first time and being fascinated by it. I'm a huge fan of uh, Shield Guardians. Yeah, I wonder where it appeared. A greater schedule. Interesting. No, not in here either. Huh. That's, I gotta tell you guys, that's really weird. How do I not know where this shield guardian comes from? I'm gonna have to look it up. But uh, I do, I am almost certain that it appears in one of the UK modules. Three... Why can't I find it? Is it in the front? Okay, hold on a second. I'm just flipping through all my modules. Yeah, UK4. Um, pretty sure there's a Shield Guardian in here. Cargo Surf Neblin. There's a Spectator, which is something we'll see in just a minute. Here we go. Main Tower. Gnome Guards. I can do this. Nope. It's a Stone Guardian which is completely different. All right, never mind me. Yeah, I got to tell you guys, I'm a little weirded out by this. I should know where this come from, comes from. I don't know where it comes from. It's really, really, really bizarre. And of course, uh, in the original Monster Manual, you've got a skeleton, and now we're back to here. Sphinxes are absolutely amazing. The original one had four different types of uh, sphinxes. Andro and uh, Gyno. Uh, are male and female versions, and then you have Cryo and Heraco Sphinx. And a Cryo Sphinx has a ram's head. I think they actually dropped that one. Oh, and tons of different types of skeletons, which I think is great. The Slod, which were definitely a fiend folio creature, from now been moved to the basic monster manual. They're really cool. They're like the demons of, uh, I think it is, uh, Limbo. And um, they're, yeah, they're really, 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 really super cool. They've got great story stuff to them. The only thing I would do is I would um, make them not, uh, make their, because uh, they have an ability to like implant an egg in somebody. And in fifth edition, it's way too easy to get rid of that egg. And um, I think uh, it would be, really cool to make that a lot harder and make people not know they have the egg until it's actually hatching. And that would be like a really cool way to do it and like possibly catch the party off guard with the wrong spells or something like that. Generally in fifth edition things are made a lot easier and I think for more experienced players you have to make it a lot, 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 lot harder. Four, four to ten times as hard to be a real challenge. So anyway, these are the original slod. And uh, more or less the same form as you have today. And yeah, they do dwell on Limbo. And just a lot of cool stuff. And then there were Slod Lords, which were Sendam and Igoral. And uh, just, you know, a lot of imagination and cool stuff in there and good illustrations. And man, get yourself a fiend folio is all I have to say. But anyway, in the original Monster Manual had no such things. They had sphinxes, so hold on a second. Let's, uh, since we talked about that, I think the specter, okay, andro sphinx, gyno sphinx, yeah, they just have two types of sphinxes, which is really uh, too bad. And then now uh, spiders, different types of spiders. Uh, the, the infamous phase spider was just sort of put in here as a subtype, which you didn't really have to, have to think about too much. Um, and, uh, of course, in the modern Monster Manual, the face spider is in the back. I don't know why. It's such a cool creature. It has a really cool ability, and it's really the best. And here is Gary Gygax in 1977 coming up with all this stuff. So, uh, yeah, unless... 
Unless there's versions of these cryo and Heraco stinks, boy, you better just homebrew them. Uh, Sprite, uh, again, fairy folk, and uh, they have a cool thing. They have like cool arrows and they can become invisible. Uh, they're two feet tall in this one. I wonder if it says how tall they are in this one. It just gives sizes. Sizes are kind of a, a new thing. Little Peter Pan looking guy here. It is tiny, yeah, so that could be 20 inches tall. Doesn't say specifically. So, uh, uh, Steerges, I, I don't know how to say that. Um, I wish I did. Still spelled the same. Kind of basically, it's just a nuisance creature for first level uh, guys. Uh, how many, does it even say number appearing in here? I don't think it does. That's interesting. How many appeared in the original monster manual? Three to 30. Yeah. That's a lot. And um, it's, you gotta think of things, you gotta think of things to scale. Like, well, sure, a couple of them, or a dozen, are not really a problem, but what if it's, what if it's a lot, you know? What if it's just like a huge amount of creatures? And um, I'm actually looking for something here. Here we go. Look at this encounter from Expedition to the Barrier Peaks. It's not much. It says uh, 100 gas bats. All of the characteristics as described. Bats with the bloat. And uh, there is a picture of them, I think, in here. No, I definitely know there's a picture of them in here. There it is. That's a gas bat. Good old Errol Otis. So anyway, but look at, look at what they do. It says, uh, let's see, it kind of it describes them a little bit. So if there's flames, they will fly down and each one will explode for one to six hit points of damage to anyone within a five foot radius. So, uh, and they also, uh, let's see, yeah. Uh, so, but look, there's a hundred of them. If, if all hundred of them fly down, that's a hundred D6 of damage. That's 350 points of damage. This is like the single most deadly encounter in all of early D&D done. Uh, I do believe, so like Succubus used to be in the demon section. I don't know why they moved it out, which is kind of a weird thing. And uh, because they definitely are fiends. So whatever they did, I, I, I don't know. And I wonder if Sylph is in this one. Nope, it's not. So, uh, as you may notice, there's a trend. They take out, like, sexy lady creatures and uh, get rid of them. The nymph, the sylph, uh, Sue monster uh, is also gone. And, of course, this, this really was just a beat stick. It just did, Oh, here's a creature. It has hit points. It does damage. No other special abilities. I mean, maybe a couple of cool things. All right, and that is time for this one. Guys, we are in the home stretch.